Chapter 8 The Nightingale The emperor of faraway China lived in a beautiful palace made of the finest porcelain. The palace had a pleasing garden. And in that garden, among the trees, lived a nightingale. It sang so melodiously that everyone stopped to listen to it. Travelers who came to the city admired everything very much, especially the palace and the gardens. But when they heard the nightingale, they all said, This is better than anything. Hearing the tales of the travelers, writers wrote many books about this faraway palace and its wonders. Poets wrote the most beautiful poems, all about the nightingale in the palace gardens. Soon, these books reached the emperor. He was pleased to hear such wonderful descriptions of the town, the palace and the garden. But the nightingale is best of all. He read. What is this? said the emperor. Is there such a bird in my kingdom? Why have I never heard of it? He called one of his lords in waiting. There is said to be a wonderful bird called a nightingale here. I wish it to appear here this evening to sing to me, said the emperor. The whole world knows what I own and I know nothing about it. The lord too had not heard of the nightingale. He and half the goat searched everywhere, but could not find the bird. At last they found a poor little maid in the kitchen who had heard the nightingale sing. She took them to the woods where the nightingale usually sang. Little nightingale, called out the kitchen maid. Our emperor wishes you to sing to him. My precious little nightingale, said the lord, I have the honor to request your attendance at a court performance tonight. My song sounds best among the trees, said the nightingale. But it went with them willingly when it heard that the emperor wished it. The palace had been decorated for the occasion. In the evening, the whole court assembled before the emperor and everybody's eyes were turned towards a little grey bird. The nightingale sang delightfully. Tears came into the emperor's eyes and rolled down his cheeks. The bird sang more beautifully than ever. Its notes touched all hearts. The emperor was charmed and said the nightingale should be rewarded. But the nightingale declined with thanks, saying, I have seen tears in the eyes of the emperor. That is my richest reward. By the emperor's orders, the nightingale began to live in the coat for then on. It had its own cage and was free to walk out twice a day and once at night. It wasn't much fun for the bird. One day, a large parcel came for the emperor. Inside the box was a toy clockwork nightingale, exactly like the living one. But it was studded all over with diamonds, rubies and sapphires. When the toy bird was wound up, it could sing one of the songs the real one sang. And it waved its tail, which glittered with silver and gold. The real and the artificial birds sang a duet, but they did not get on very well. For the real nightingale sang in its own way, and the clockwork one could only sing waltzes. Then the artificial bird sang alone. It was just as great a success as the real one, and then it was so much prettier to look at. It sang the same tunes over and over again without being tired. The emperor said that it was the turn of the real one. But where was it? No one had noticed that it had flown out of the open window back to its own green woods. What is the meaning of this? said the emperor. All the people were angry with the real bird and said it was most ungrateful. The real nightingale was then banished from the kingdom. The mechanical bird was given a place on the silk cushion close to the emperor's bed. Five years passed. One day, the emperor fell ill. Music! Music! shrieked the emperor. 
precious little golden bird. Sing, sing. But the artificial bird stood silent. A spring inside it had broken, so of course it could not sing. Suddenly, close to the window, there was a burst of lovely song. It was the living nightingale perched on a branch outside. It had heard of the emperor's need and had come to bring comfort and hope to him. As it sang, the emperor started to get better. The nightingale sang about the quiet churchyard. When the roses bloom, where there is a beautiful fragrance of flowers. Thanks, thanks," said the emperor. "You heavenly little bird, I know you. I banished you from my kingdom, and yet you saved my life. How can I ever repay you?" "You have rewarded me," said the nightingale. "I brought tears to your eyes the very first time I ever sang to you, and I shall never forget it." But sleep now and wake up fresh and strong. I will sing to you. Then it sang again, and the emperor fell into a sweet, refreshing sleep. The next day, the sun shone in at his window. When he woke, refreshed and well. You must always stay with me," said the emperor to the nightingale. "You can sing only when you wish to." "I can't build my nest and live in this palace," said the nightingale. I will come and sing to you whenever I can, but let no one know of this. And for many years afterwards, the emperor ruled wisely and kindly, and with great happiness. Nobody ever found out that the nightingale was singing to him and telling him about what was happening all around.